Hello, welcome to today's service, the fourth Sunday of Lent. Ian will be continuing his uh, Lent sermons today, and today is also known as Mothering Sunday, and our opening hymn of praise picks up the Magnificat, Mary's Song. We share in Tell Out My Soul. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of us. We prepare our hearts before the Lord as we say, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us all. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and in faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you 
our God. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Colic for today, the fourth Sunday of Lent. Merciful Lord, absolve your people from their offences, that through your bountiful goodness we may all be delivered from the chains of those sins which by our frailty we have committed. Grant this, Heavenly Father. For Jesus Christ's sake, our blessed Lord and Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Let's listen to our reading and our psalm for today. The first lesson for this morning is taken from 1 Kings chapter 19 verses 1 to 18. Now Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. And then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank, and strengthened by that food, he travelled forty days and forty nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. And there he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? And he replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. And the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. 
And then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go back the way you came, and go to the desert of Damascus. And when you get there, anoint Hazael king over Aram. Also, anoint Jehu son of Nimshi king over Israel, and anoint Elisha son of Shaphat, from Abel, Mehola, to succeed you as prophet. Jehu will put to death any who escape the sword of Hazael, and Elijah will put to death any who escape the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve seven thousand in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal, and whose mouths have not kissed him. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Psalm 42, verses 1 to 11. As the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people to say to me all day long, Where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul. How I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. My soul is downcast within me. Therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan, from heights of Hermon, from Mount Mitzah. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls, all your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day, the Lord directs his love. At night, his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? My bones suffer mortal agony as my foes taunt me, saying to me all day long, Where is your God? Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. Thanks be to God. Our gradual hymn picks up the theme from the psalm. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my strength, my 
Gospel according to John, chapter 21, beginning at verse 15. Glory to you, O Lord. When the disciples had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he had said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly, truly I say to you, When you were young, you girded yourself and walked where you would. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish to go. This he said to show by what death he was to glorify God. And after this he said to him, Follow me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Most people go through a time in life when they feel really down in the dumps, sad, depressed. Sometimes it's a particular time of the year and those suffering from SADS uh, syndrome will know something about that. The long, dark 
winter nights, the short days, the lack of sunshine, all basically has a detrimental effect upon our mental health. Of course, some people uh, suffer from clinical depression in a very real way, in which they need, at the very least, medication, or perhaps at a more extreme level, long periods of time in, in psychiatric hospitals. But probably most of us have felt somewhere between the real clinical depression and the simply down in the dumps. Uh, but I think you'll relate to these feelings, especially in the last year that we've just gone through. It's had a very detr detrimental effect on people's mental health, mental well-being. And so things like depression are very much on the increase at the moment. Um, I think this form of despondency sometimes and feeling a failure is particularly um, true of Christian leaders in churches and also various visionary leaders in society and in general because we have a great vision of how things could be and how things should be and when life doesn't turn out like that it's very um, natural to feel not just down in the dumps but to feel like throwing in the towel and, and giving up. How many more knocks can we take? How much more discouragement can we take before we suddenly say enough is is enough? And I know several of my clergy colleagues who are going through a little bit of that at the moment. Uh, and, and in case anybody out there starts to uh, send me worried emails and cards, uh, let me tell you that uh, uh, I, I'm not in that position at all. Uh, Although I, I do go through periods, naturally, when I think, you know, what's the point? But they don't really last very long. You may wonder if, if this form of, of depression and despondency uh, ever happened in Bible times, especially to the great heroes of the faith, the robust men and women of prayer and miracles and faith. Well, the character that we're looking at today, the prophet Elijah, was a man just like this. Uh, in spite of all his hard work, his preaching, his prophesying, his efforts, despite it all, uh, wickedness still rode arrogantly through the land and Elijah suffered many setbacks. When he was a young prophet, he probably thought he could put the world to right and sometimes the young prophets and preachers and idealists they look at the old men and the old women of yesterday who've become rather tired and sad and cynical and they think oh I can do it uh, these old people they they didn't know how to do it but, but I've read the books I've been to the courses and the conference and I can do it but when we encounter Elijah uh, in our story today we find him very despondent sitting under a tree out there in the wilderness in the desert feeling he had been a failure and as much a failure as those who had gone before him. It's often true sometimes especially for those who've traveled the wrong the, the long road of life perhaps in middle age or in retirement, looking back on life and thinking that you haven't achieved very much, so much has evaporated and gone. It's not uncommon to become depressed and a little bit despondent. And even in our Christian journey, we can reach a kind of a, a mid-life crisis of faith especially people who've had a, a, a real live adult conversion, a, a change of life, a confirmation, an infilling of the Holy Spirit, discovering St Mary's Church for the first time. It's all so wonderful. It's all so new. It's all so terribly exciting and we're ready to take on the world. But then a little bit of reality seeps in and we can't quite change what we thought we could and people let us down and we're not all 
effective. Life isn't usually as simple as that and it takes a, a more uh, long-term, more mature view to take life a little bit uh, slowly and a little bit more patiently. Uh, so like Elijah, we may complain, I wish I wasn't here. I'm no better off than those who went before. Or Jesus one evening by the Sea of Galilee, perhaps, when all the crowds had taken offence and drifted away, he turned to his disciples and said, I think, in a melancholy voice, will you also go away? And so Elijah finds himself in a wilderness experience. And he is also in the wilderness physically. Now, he had just been engaged in a mighty act of faith, which had put his life at risk. Uh, he confronted the prophets of Baal and uh, things worked out for him. Amazingly, the fire of God fell from heaven. God vindicated and uh, God answered his prayer in an amazing way. But now we find a few weeks and months later, uh, the tide has turned. Things are not going so well. Queen Jezebel is out to get him. And so he runs in fear of his life. We find Elijah out in the wilderness sitting under a tree, wishing he was never born, feeling a failure, wishing even that he was dead. That's how low Elijah felt. So if you've ever felt like that, um, you have a soulmate in that great prophet, Elijah. You know, often we look for spiritual cures and feel that spiritually we have sinned greatly and we have disappointed God and we have got our prayer structure wrong and uh, or the Holy Spirit isn't filling us enough or we're out of God's will. But you know something? What Elijah needed was two things. A good night's sleep and a good meal. It's as simple as that. He was actually physically exhausted. And so the wonderful thing is that God provides for his physical needs, some rest, some food. And so a little exercise perhaps as well, uh, and a good sleep and good food can go a long way in the desert. I'm told that the 40 days of Lent does not include Sundays and apparently for some people they can take the Lenten fast off on a Sunday and enjoy their meat and their food and, and their drink. Although some of us uh, of a more rigorous sort uh, want to try and abstain at the moment from Sundays as well. But God wouldn't mind if you can't quite stay the course and need some physical exercise to get you back on course again. Even St Benedict, the father of Western monasticism and his very otherwise strict rules for monks, uh, makes allowances for the sick and for the elderly and for the young that if they have to have a bit of extra food or a bit more meat uh, or, or a bit more wine, then Benedict says, just let them have it. Perhaps that's what they need rather than you to lay hands on somebody or to have hands laid on you to pray for you. Maybe it's just a physical thing and not necessarily a spiritual alienation. And so Elijah was able to travel out into the wilderness, therefore, for the next 40 days on the strength of all that. And that 40 day period reminds us, doesn't it, of our Lord's 40 day period in the wilderness. The, 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 the period of 40 days is 
highly symbolic in the Bible. It need not be a literal 40 days, although it um, can be uh, 40 years long. I was wearied with this generation, says God in the Psalms. 40 years being the length of a generation. So 40 years can simply just be a good long time. But Elijah had to take a journey and there is a journey, a process of pilgrimage, a journey associated with our Lenten desert. We are on a journey and we have to travel and often it's just in the travelling that we encounter a shift or a change that moves us out of the desert but stay in the desert for a while because the pilgrimage in the desert can be uh, quite refreshing, a time of rest away from the normal routine of life and the lockdown in many ways has been for us a rather long Lent. I think we're looking forward to Easter. But the great thing is that uh, in, in Elijah's despondency he tells his story to God. He pours out his heart to God. He tells God of his pain, his anger, his fear, his self-pity, and he tells God the story twice. So God uh, doesn't mind hearing the story several times. Sometimes we need to tell our story several times before the change happens. And God is robust enough to take our anger and disappointment as forcibly as we need to express it and to share with us in the burden. It's also good to share with a friend and to let it all just pour out. Someone who will listen non-judgmentally, who doesn't feel that they have to fix things, but they can pray for us and encourage us, or perhaps just uh, send a meal round to us or a little gift or some something else non-spiritual. And then Elijah discovers that God is not necessarily in the fire or the earthquake or in the rushing wind. He's not always in the excitement and the drama of great charismatic praise services with everyone shouting and singing and noise all around. There's a time and a place for all that, but sometimes we don't hear God in all that. Elijah didn't. Sometimes we need to hear the sound of silence. That moment when grace comes to us, when the voice comes to us, when the word comes to us, in the stillness when things settle down and when we are able to focus on what's going on in our lives, God walks with us, breathes, and we realise he's ministering to our soul in a very deep way. The writer of Psalm 42, which we heard today, also recognises this same kind of melancholy, this depression, this spiritual weariness. And his way out of it is by memory. He chooses not just to think about the bad days that he's presently experiencing, but he deliberately remembers the good days. He remembers the past blessing when life was good. And he says, yet will I praise God, for I shall yet again praise him who is the light in my face and my God. He also believes that he's going to come through this time of depression into a time of praise and thankfulness as well. So that's good advice from the psalm. Remember the good times. Give thanks for them. Remember God's faithfulness in the past and in expectation of that. Remain in the wilderness for as long as it takes and allow the wilderness, the desert, to do its work. Well, did Jesus ever feel like giving up? Did Jesus ever feel despondent and depressed? I feel he did because as well as being God he was also fully human. He shared all our temptations, he shared our loneliness. Jesus must have felt very defeated when you think of all the people that he helped and healed and preached to and the great crowds that used to follow him and 
ate on every word and now where were they at the end in Jerusalem there? People turned their backs on him very, very quickly. He was alone in the Garden of Gethsemane, wrestling with the will of God for himself. Um, he must have felt that great sense of despondency, even upon the cross. Things just got darker and darker on that first Good Friday when he cried out in despondency, echoing the words of Psalm 22. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And yet Hebrews tells us, the book of Hebrews tells us that for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. Somehow he was able to receive a glimpse, just a little glimpse that beyond the darkness was a horizon, beyond the winter was the spring, beyond the lockdown was the ease of restriction, beyond Lent there was Easter. And I believe that it was that faith in the future as well as God's comforting presence, oh yes and the presence of friends as well, there was Mary his mother, there was John, his best friend. There were others as well, no doubt, who had not deserted them. And let's think about them. And let's not desert our friends in their time of need. So therefore, what I ask you to do is this, that whatever you're going through, stick with your faith. Hang on in there. Stick with Jesus. Stay with the word. The word does not promise that every day will be joyful and every day will be victorious and every prayer will be answered. But it does tell us that we are on the way to the kingdom, to the future, to life in all its fullness. And so may you in your wilderness discover many delightful oasis springs of water. May you discover the birds bringing you food. May you discover angels bringing you a nice meal and a drink. May you receive refreshment for the journey is only halfway through. There are a few more miles to go. Go now into this desert in the strength of the Holy Spirit, in the power of the name of Jesus. Amen. Let us say the creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Let us turn to our prayers as we pray in our Lord's name, guided by the Holy Spirit, to our Father. Let us pray to the Father with thankful hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for all leaders of your church throughout the world. 
give wisdom and guidance. Bless them with health in body, mind and spirit. Give courage and endurance to minister faithfully to those in their care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Bishop Christopher as he prepares for his retirement and we give thanks for his service amongst us. We pray for all involved in the discerning process to elect a new bishop for the Diocese of Portsmouth. We give thanks and pray for the Commissary Bishop Rob Wickham coming to serve during the vacancy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray for your church here, for Reverend Ian R. Vicar and Area Dean of Fairham, for all who share with him in your service in ministry and pastoral care. We pray for all who serve amongst us in administration, practical maintenance and upkeep, for the sound and fabric team, and for Ron and all helpers in the tea rooms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for all who are persecuted for their faith as they follow your way in the light of Christ. Merciful Lord, give them comfort, courage and hope. Sustain and bless all who respond to your loving purposes. And even going through the desert of despondency, may we have ears open in the stillness to hear and to trust you for what you have lying ahead for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we pray for all the leaders and nations of the world, that strife and injustice and oppression may cease, that the peoples of the world, in all its diversity, may be governed with wisdom under your guidance, in ways of justice and peace, that all may honour one another to serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks, Lord, for the, wide, the widespread distribution of the antivirus vaccine so far. And we pray that doses of injections may quickly be available to those areas in the world where there is still a great shortage. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community, the arrangements affecting families, teachers and children going back into schools. For all suffering the anxieties and uncertainties of these times. Help us, Lord, to look forward with hope to a safe easing of lockdown. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for our Queen Elizabeth for Prince Philip in hospital and their family. We pray for all families and households in our communities who are suffering distress and breakdown in family life. We pray, Father, for the true blessing of your mothering and healing love. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we pray for the lonely, the elderly, the isolated and the depressed, for the sick and those who care for them, at home or in hospital. And we pray for the doctors and the nurses and all the staff who minister with concern and medical care. We pray, Father, that you will bring comfort, consolation and peace to those grieving the loss of loved ones, especially where there is an expected tragedy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the Reverend David Simpson and his family as he moves on to his new parish in Romford. We pray for his new congregation. And we give thanks for his loving service and ministry among us here. And so, Father, as we humbly pray for ourselves, refresh and nurture us day by day. Inspire us to nurture others, especially those going through wilderness of pain and anxiety. Help us to share the health-giving spirit of your mothering love and fill us, Lord, with a constant and enduring faith in the love of Christ Jesus, so that we may shine with his light, fired up by the Holy Spirit. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. As we come to our peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. May the peace of the Lord be always with each one of us. Let us share in our hearts and minds our Lord's peace, our offertory hymn, Dear Lord and Father of mankind.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us all give thanks to the Lord our God, for it is right to give thanks and praise to our Lord. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word you open our eyes to see your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love as we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast. With joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, and as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit the broken bread and wine out poured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Lord, by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. Lord of all life, Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all your saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. So we pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. For near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
we share together in our hearts and in our minds. As we do in our hymn, we remind ourselves we have a wonderful Saviour who hides us, our souls, in the cleft of the rock. A wonderful Saviour is Jesus my Lord.
So let us pray. Lord God, whose blessed Son, our Saviour, gave his back to the smiters and did not hide his face from shame, give us grace to endure the sufferings of this present time with sure confidence in the glory that shall be revealed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we, who share Christ's body, live his risen life. We who drink his cup, bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights, give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so that we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn is Follow, Follow, I Would Follow Jesus, Down in the Valley. blessing. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you and all you love, now and always. Amen. Let's go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.